Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video, I'm going to review the G-Model FPV OTG receiver. I'm going to go through its features and in the end of the video, I'm also going to compare it with the Ishin R051, which like the G-Model also supports Android and iOS devices. Inside this box, we're only getting the receiver along with two linear antennas. One of them got an SMA connector and the other one got an RPSMA connector. The device itself is pretty big and you can see that it's much bigger than the Ishin RTG01 and the R051 and the reason for that is that it has a very big battery inside. So you can see that the battery is pretty big and I've googled it out from what I've seen online. I think this is a 1S 1600 mAh Lion battery. So it should give you plenty of usage time. On the bottom of the device, we can find a micro USB connector that is used to charge the device. On and off switch, pressing it once will turn on the device and pressing it twice will turn it off. A USB data connector, which I haven't been able to use. I tried it with a couple Android devices and it didn't work. It just worked with the Wi-Fi, which I'm going to explain to you how it works in a minute. And on the top, we've got an SMA and our PSMA female connectors, which is kind of clever because it can match your favorite antenna and I think it's a pretty good idea. In order to use this device, you're going to need to download an application. So first you have to scan this QR code or you can use my links in the description that will link to the iPhone and Android apps. In order to start using the device, first turn it on by single pressing this button. Then you need to connect to its Wi-Fi network. So go to the settings and search for the Wi-Fi image SSID. Then you're going to have an underscore and a random string. The default password is 8 times 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hit join and then open the HD FPV app. And you can see that now there is no signal. So we see this is just this snow screen. But after plugging a VTX, you can see that it is working. Now the nice thing about it is that multiple devices can connect to the Wi-Fi network. So now I'm going to connect also my Android device. This is just a cheap phone that I have for testings. So I need to connect to the Wi-Fi network. And now you can see that I see the picture both on the Android and on the iPad. So that's pretty nice because you can just set up a Wi-Fi connection and you can use it in order to display the FPV on numerous devices. So it's a pretty cool feature. In order to record the video, you have to press this button and then the video is going to start recording to the gallery. In the Ishin R051, for example, this feature didn't exist on iOS devices, so it only worked on Android devices, so it's a cool thing to have. And this is one of the biggest advantages of the G-Model over the Ishin R051. If you want to stop the recording, just press this button again. And if you want to view the video, just press this gallery icon, then you can see that the video is going to be played. You can also snap a photo by pressing this photo icon. It will ask you for a permission to access your gallery. You can also enter the settings that will allow you to change the SSID, which means the name of the Wi-Fi network. You can select the channel. Pick format and image resolutions are not configurable. In the Android app, you also have an option to upgrade the device. It's not present in the iOS app as well, but right now it says that this is the latest version. Another feature that the Android app has is the ability to use VR goggles. So you can see that now the picture is split into two. However, I don't think that you will be able to really fly FPV with these devices. So it's not a big advantage, but it's also another thing that you should know when considering buying this device. In addition, on Android, you can rotate the screen and the iOS is linked to this feature. In order to change the frequency, you have to press this icon. Then you can either initiate a search which will go through all the available bands and as you can see right now the Android app was also affected because it's changing the settings of the device itself. It will find the best signal and when it's done it will show you a list which has the strongest signal started from the top 
all the way to the bottom. Then you need to select the one that has the highest signal strength. And now you can see that it's been displayed also on the Android device. You can also select the channel manually. Now let's do it on Android. So here you have to press this icon and then you can just select it like that and then it will be locked. Scanning over here is done by pressing the auto button. It's going to scan. And then you can select your desired frequency. And over here, you can see the frequency list. Let's say, for example, you're on a race and you want to go through all the frequencies uh, between competitors, for example. You can just press this frequency list and then you can just select them. So it's also pretty cool. And if you want to select it on iOS, first, of course, you have to do a scan and then you can select it by pressing this button over here. So what I've done over here, I've connected the iPhone to the Ishin R051 and both iPad and this Android device are connected to the G model through Wi-Fi. So we can perform a little latency test and you can see when I'm rotating the camera to the right, you can see that the image is much more responsive on the iPhone and over here there is a little bit of delay. And by the way, you can see that there is no difference between the Android device and the iPad. You can see that both changes are displayed almost at the same time, but the R051 performs better. And this is probably due to the fact that it's connected through a cable. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I read that it is possible to connect the G model through a cable, but it didn't work for me. And by the way, it didn't work on a computer as well. So unlike the ROTG-01, which worked both with PC and Mac, it didn't work on the G model and it didn't work with the Ishin R051, as I mentioned in my review. In addition, on the iPhone, you can see the battery status of the Ishin R051 and you cannot see the battery status of the G model. However, it does have a very big battery and it will last you for a longer time than the 051, which can probably last for an hour or maybe just a little bit less. I didn't test it exactly, but I think that the G model should last you for about two hours of battery time. Uh, we'll put it into test and I will update the description once I will have the results. So overall, the G model FPV receiver is a pretty cool device. And I think one of its best features is the ability to share the same FPV feed over numerous devices. So let's say you are holding an event. It's a good idea just to place a couple of these devices and you can tell your crowd that they can connect to it. However, they will be able to alter its settings. So I think it could have been a smart idea to protect the changing of the band and other settings with a password and then the crowd wouldn't be able to change it. It suffers from a big delay issue, so don't expect to fly FPV with it. Also, the Ishin R051 had this issue. And out of these three, the only device that is suitable for FPV flying is the ROTG01, which is not supported on iOS. It supports only Android, PC, and Mac. In addition, it has a pretty big battery that will last you for a long time. And it has both RP and SMA connectors on top, which is useful if you have different types of antennas. I don't think that this dual antenna is a big advantage over the other two devices because you are not going to fly it on the long range. However, I'm going to review soon the ROTG-02, which is a dual antenna version of the Ishin ROTG-01. Then I will be able to compare how it performs and I will do a range test. Another big advantage that the G model has over the Ishin R051 that it supports DVR recording on iOS. And it's a big advantage because most people are looking to record their video to the device and that's why they buy these devices. And you will be able to do so with the G model. And as I mentioned, the R051 is lacking this feature. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions about any of these devices, feel free to ask it in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you on my next videos. Goodbye.